And Spencer, it did seem like that defense, which brings back a ton of veterans, which added Caleb Downs, which moved Sonny Styles to linebacker, where he, the good Lord, built him to play. It felt like they made life very difficult on the offense. Yeah, it, it is honestly kind of difficult to get a read on where this offense is, Andy, because they go against this defense every day. And so when you do that, you're going to look a little pedestrian. I don't think Ohio State's offense will be pedestrian this year, but the defense is just so good. Like they lost Josh Proctor to the NFL. He's probably going to be a fifth or sixth round pick. They replaced him with Caleb Downs. He needs no introduction. They lost both starting linebackers. They replaced him with two former five stars, one who's a freak athlete uh, that played safety and one who's a freak athlete that's played linebacker his entire life. They lost a defensive tackle and they replaced him with a uh, a partial starter from last year, and then two top 50 prospects from that were rising up the ranks last year, and Larry Johnson feels like they're going to be good. That's it. Everything else returns. The number one pass defense in the country, all three corners, Jordan Hancock, Denzel Burke, Davis, and Igmanosin, they're all three back, and then Lathan Ransom decided to return. Caleb Downs is in there. The linebackers look like they're better in coverage a little bit this year than they were last year. Like I don't see a hole in this defense right now, and – that sounds crazy on April 15th, but that's where we're at right now because this defense was so good a year ago, and Jim Knowles is getting even more comfortable in Columbus in year three than he was in year two. I, I think that's a fair statement, though, because there are so many guys who've played in games. It's it's very similar to like when we talk about Michigan's offensive line going into last year and how many good players they had on that line. We had seen those guys play in games. It wasn't like we were guessing about this. So with Ohio State's defense – they bring back all of these guys that we have seen be incredibly successful, and they have upgraded the talent with other players who we like or Caleb Downs, who we have seen be successful at a high level elsewhere. Yeah, it's it's pretty remarkable. And and you know, credit to everybody wants to point to the NIL operation at Ohio State. And like, yes, they did a great job of bringing those guys back. But you know, uh J I promise JT Tuimolo was going to make more money uh, in a couple weeks in the NFL draft than he was uh you know, from NIL, whatever Ohio State's giving him. Jack Sawyer, the exact same way. So many of these guys were going to make so much more money playing at the NFL than they ever will at Ohio State. So, you know, they did this to prove a point, to do the things that, you know, quite frankly, Ryan Day put right out there at the 50-yard line in the horseshoe on Saturday and just kind of came out and said it. Like, they have very, very clear defined goals, not only for this defense, uh, but for the entire roster and for what this schedule should look like. Well, and that's the thing I find interesting is, like you said, he did it at the 50-yard line in front of the whole crowd. He said the goal is to win a national championship, beat the team up north. Interesting. I don't know that he was looking at the order necessarily. Of you do, and, he, and Well, this year you don't have to do the first if you want to do the other. You may have to do it eventually if you want to do the other, but you don't have to do it maybe the first opportunity. But that is as direct as you're going to get from a college football coach. Like normally – Coaches won't even mention a national championship. They won't talk about it, but he just came out and said it. Well, Ryan Day does a good job every year of defining the goals. I remember 2022 Big Ten champion or the Big Ten Media Days. Ryan Day said, We have three goals. We want to uh, beat the team up north, win the Big Ten, win the national championship. He said, But we're not there yet. We have a long way to go to get to those goals, and we have to take it day by day. No, he is completely done with that mindset. He knows exactly what the big picture is. And I think that's the biggest shift in Ryan Day, especially. He's no longer calling plays and having to worry about what to call in week four against Marshall or what to do on third down against Western Michigan, you know, in week two. He's more worried about, you know, the overall health of the program, what he needs to do to get this team to where it needs to be, and quite frankly, where it has to be this year. And so he is very much like in the mindset of defining things and just telling you what it is. He knows the pressure that that brings, but he also knows that he has the roster to do everything and kind of shut everybody up and deal with that pressure in a way that results in a national championship. And so he has completely shifted. It's the it's a completely different Ryan Day from what I'm used to seeing, to be honest with you. Let's talk about game time. Do you want to see the Gators and Miami play in the swamp? You need to take it right now on game time. Do you want to see Ohio State go to the – to Austin Stadium and play Oregon? Do you want to see Luke Combs in a football stadium this spring? It doesn't matter if it's sports, if it's concerts, if it's comedy shows. Game Time has your tickets. It could be the day before the event. Game Time has your tickets. So download that Game Time app. Find your seat. By the way, you can look 
at exactly where your seat would be before you buy. Use that code STAPLES for $20 off your first purchase. It is the easiest way to buy last minute tickets. You, could, you click on the all in price, it tells you exactly what it is. You know how much you're spending. Nothing is going to surprise you. And here's the other thing. The least surprising part is they have tickets. It doesn't matter what it is. They have tickets. You want look, the Eras Tour, Taylor Swift, when it starts up again, they got tickets. So go to Game Time, download that app, use the code STAPLES for $20 off your first purchase. Sporting events, concerts, comedy shows, it does not matter. They have tickets to everything. So Chip Kelly got asked after the game, how do you evaluate your offensive line? Which is the group that probably faces the most questions uh, on, on this team? And Chip was, it was pretty funny hearing him talk about it because he's like, it's actually kind of hard because the defensive line is so good. So you're trying to figure out, is there a lot of improvement that needs to be made? Or is it just that nobody's going to be able to do anything against these guys? And uh, so that's probably going to be a question mark really until they play games, right? Yeah, last year in spring ball, we thought that they should have taken some of the defensive tackles out and not let them practice so the offense could get some reps. And then it resulted in the offensive line just being not very good last year because they not only were they going against a good defensive line in practice, but they just didn't really gel together at any point last year. This year, it's a little bit more of a stalemate. You know, the defensive line still winning the day most days just because they're so, so good. But this offensive line has held its own in a way that we did not see from last year's unit. And I think this offensive line has improved. The left side is completely set. Josh Simmons, uh, for all this, the scrutiny that he got at the beginning of the year last year, was actually turned out to be a pretty good left tackle for Ohio State. And the Buckeyes feel like he can be a first-team All-Big Ten guy. Donovan Jackson, he's a known quantity, former five-star. He's got the left guard spot locked down. Center, it looks like it's Seth McLaughlin. People kind of scoff at that because everybody watched the Rose Bowl. It's the Rose Bowl. But the center issues, he hasn't had any snapping issues the entire – spring so far and Ohio State hasn't seen that and so he they think that they're past that it's that right side that Ohio State needs to get taken care of can Josh Fryer step up and be that right tackle that everybody needs him to be be that bookend on the other side of Josh Simmons can the Joshes take over these tackle spots and then the right guard spot I think that's one area where you could see if Ohio State needs somebody in the transfer portal it could be at right guard um it it just it looks like it's a little too fluid for their liking right now, whether that's Carson Hinsman, the former starting center, Luke Montgomery, second year uh, guard, or Tegra Shibola, third year swing offensive lineman who can kind of do a little bit of everything. But does he do one of those positions to the point where he can start? You're just not really sure right now. And so if there's a spot on that entire roster right now that I think you could see them be aggressive in if they feel like it's a little too fluid to, to call right now, it's that right guard spot. If you go out and find a proven commodity – plug that person in, then you feel like you're set on the offensive line. So you asked Ryan Day a really interesting question after the spring game, and I've got his answer here. And, and you had asked him about depth at receiver. And I think most of the people watching who aren't necessarily at Ohio State fans are going, what are you talking about? That's the deepest team in America at receiver. How, yeah. how can you be asking this? But you pointed out in your question, their goal is to play 16 or 17 games in this 12-team playoff. So here's Ryan Day's answer to that. I think it's a legitimate question. Um, you know, I think when you when you have you know, Mecca, Nell, and then Jaden Ballard, Jeremiah, and then you get into, you know, Brett Rogers, who has done some really good things this spring. I know he had a couple tough plays today, but we think he can really help us next year. Uh, we're, we're missing uh, Brandon Ennis. Brandon Ennis, um, same thing. He was having, you know, so, you know, a lot of momentum, and then and there was a procedure we just felt like out of – out of caution, we had to get it done. Uh, we just didn't want it to linger, so we did that. So we'll need him to step up in a big way. And then, like you, to your point, we're going to need a couple more guys to step up to build that depth there uh, because you know, we do have some really good players, but we're going to need them all. So I think it's um, it's important that some of those younger guys do step up. This is one where, you know, you, Julian Fleming's at Penn State right now, and you, and you remember that. And when you point out 16, 17 games – you think about it, man, if they don't have the depth of receiver, who does? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's an interesting question because Brian Hartline has recruited at an incredible level. Um, but that 21 class with Emeka Buka and Marvin Harrison Jr. also included Jaden Ballard. And Ohio State has just been not begging, but really hoping that he comes along and, and becomes a deep threat that can take the top off the of defense and do things. And, and if he does that, then I think they're probably okay at receiver. 
But if he doesn't do that, that 2022 recruiting class was a four man class, but it's largely gone. And the two guys who are still there, you know, one guy's at Iowa now, Caleb Brown, the other Caleb Burton is now uh, gone as well. So the other two guys in that class were Keon Grays and Kojo Antwi, and they just haven't progressed the way that normal Brian Hartline receivers have. Keon's done some decent things. I think Kojo's a decent special teams player, but those aren't guys that you're going to be able to rely on against a Georgia or even like a Michigan at the end of the year. So if they go through injuries to Emeka Buka or uh, Jeremiah Smith or Carnell Tate or Brandon Innes, who's currently on the shelf, they have to have guys – who can produce at the Brian Hartline level. It is a non-negotiable. The standard, as they say at Ohio State from Jim Tressel, the standard is the standard. And so, you know, if they're not meeting that standard, then you can't play them. And so you've got to have some depth. Is Bryson Rogers the answer there? Former former four-star kid from Florida they really, really like, but is he ready for that role in year two? I'm not sure. Can Mylon Graham, the five-star, on three five-star receiver, come in? Uh, you know, in the summer because he didn't get he, he wasn't here in the spring and take up some reps and show that he can be reliable in the slot in case in Mecca or Brandon Innes goes down. Like they have to answer those questions pretty quickly. Uh, and I'm not like, you know, sounding the alarms on the wide receiver position. And I think everybody in the comments would probably tell me I'm an idiot if I were to sound the alarms on the Ohio State wide receiver room. Like that would be crazy. But also. If they don't have the depth to win a national championship, they need to go find the depth to win. Well, I, and I also think I think you're pointing out something that every team that aspires to win a national championship is going to deal with, even yeah. when you think you're deep. Like we're going to talk about Georgia, and we talked about Georgia at length on Friday with Jake Rowe. Like they're really deep on the defensive line. They still might have a couple of key injuries that change that as the season goes on. Like they will be looking in the portal for that one more little extra piece as Ohio State. Well, that one more little extra piece that will give them the depth they hope to to need to go, like you said, 16, 17 games. Like that, I think that's the part that the Ryan Days and Kirby Smarts of the world are considering. Maybe most of us aren't considering it because we haven't seen it yet, but it is a reality for them if they want to win a national championship. Well, and the thing about it is, I think it's really smart for these coaches. I think that way. Every coach thinks they're going to win the, the conference championship, right? Like Kirby thought he was going to beat Alabama last year in the conference title game. And I thought Georgia would win that game easily. Well, in the new playoff format, since they lost to Alabama in the SEC championship game, yes, they're going to get in the playoffs still. But that means if they're going to win it, they have to play an extra game because they're not getting that first round by. Let's say Ohio State goes out to Eugene on October 12th and beats Oregon. And then Oregon gets revenge in Lucas Oil. Uh, on de- in late December. Well, then all of a sudden Ohio State's playing 17 games because if you want to win a championship, you're not getting that first round bye as one of the top four conference champions just because of an upset loss in the championship game or a loss to an equal team. And then now you have to play that extra game and you got to be ready for 17. So it's one thing to prepare for 15. It's another thing to say, well, we might have to play 16, but you have to prepare for 17 because you just don't know what's going to happen on conference championship weekend. And, you know, it's not even a, a round robin anymore through these teams. So you might lose one game in conference and not make the conference championship game. And so you've got to be ready to play 17. And so these coaches that really get it and what need know what they need to win a national championship, they're not thinking about 16, even though they want to. And they think they should think about 16 because they should win the Big Ten. They should win the SEC. But you have to think about that extra game, that 17th. And that could be the difference. That could be the difference between – you know, having the depth to go 16 or being battered and beaten by the end of 16 and you don't have it for 17, you lose a championship. One more before I let you go, Spencer. Will Howard or Devin Brown? Is this really a competition or is it is it Will's job and they're just making this go longer? What what did Devin Brown do this spring to, to make it a competition? Yeah, I thought Devin was really uh, – uh, he, he was good. I thought he was pretty good in the spring. He was very intentional. That's the word I was looking for. Intentional in the way he did things. He commanded the offense well. Um, he got Chip Kelly's system pretty well. He's still mobile with his feet, even though he uh, had that ankle injury there in October of last year, and it sidelined him for a while. He had that injury in the in the bowl game, but he's still pretty mobile. He's, he throws a decent ball. He's got good touch on the football when he needs to. I think he does a, a good job of just commanding the offense. But with that being said, if they're both equal in practice and Will Howard and Devin Brown feel like they are pretty equal right now, I think the the X factor in this is that Will Howard is always going to look a little better in a full 11 on 11 than he does in practice settings with the black jersey on. 
because the things he does with his feet, the bulldozing mentality, um, running the football, the way that he is, the, the physicality that he runs the football with is exactly what Chip Kelly wants. And he, if, if they can both throw the football the same way, but you get in those 11 on 11 full contacts that Ohio state won't get into until August 31st when they play Akron. Uh, I think Will Howard will, can make that difference, you know, stand out because of the way that he runs the ball, the physicality, the durability that he showed at Kansas state. I think that's, what's going to end up winning out. But I do think that Devin Brown has done, you know, there's nothing Devin Brown has done that leads, leads me to believe that he's out of this race. I just think ultimately it still ends up being Will Howard. And the longer he's in it, the longer he stays on the roster as a, as the transfer portal opens tomorrow. Spencer, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks. Thank you so much for watching. Just a reminder, subscribe to this channel right here so you never miss an episode of Andy Staples on 3. And oh, by the way, Watch all the other great videos on the On3Sports YouTube channel.